Nomads from North Africa. They've lived in the Sahara for over a thousand years. Trading something we take for granted today. But was once one of the most valuable commodities on the planet. Salt. Salt was everything. Salt was literally the difference between life and death. Before refrigeration, salt was the key to preserving food. It absorbs water and stops bacteria from growing. Salted food can last for a year without spoiling. Access to salt determined whether you were powerful or not. I can't send uh, an army across the water or great distances without provisions, and their provisions are going to go bad if they are not salted. The Tuareg have discovered a rich supply under their feet. Millions of years ago, the Sahara was a sea. As the water evaporated, left behind huge salt deposits. The salt trade is the Tuareg's livelihood. They mine it at Tekhaza in the middle of the Sahara, then trek hundreds of miles south to the markets in the great cities of the Mali Empire, Jene, Gao, and Timbuktu. but it is a dangerous journey in a deadly landscape. The greatest fear of every traveler, a sandstorm. Whipped up in seconds by 70 mile per hour winds. When a sandstorm hits, it fills the air with sand, it fills your lungs, it fills your eyes and your nose. You can't see. This wind and this sand can strip the paint off a car. You have to get shelter or you die. One of our party was lost in the desert. After that, I never went ahead or never lagged behind again. After two months in the Sahara, Ibn Battuta's camel train reaches its destination. The cities of Mali. Travelers have nothing to fear. They gave me gifts of food and treated me with the utmost generosity. May God reward them for their kindness. Tuareg merchants can now trade their precious cargo. In Mali, salt is so in demand, it's traded for gold. Today, most gold in the world has to be mined deep underground. In Mali, it flows out of the bedrock of the River Niger. At 
this time, as much as two-thirds of the world's known gold reserves are in West Africa. The key that turns Mali's rulers into some of the richest men in the world, and their cities into centers of learning. Timbuktu University, one of the oldest in the world. The first in sub-Saharan Africa, up to 25,000 people, a quarter of the population, students. Over 300,000 scrolls. One of the greatest libraries in the Islamic world. Scholars from lots and lots of places went there to study the scrolls. It was the World Wide Web. It was the place where information was held. This is Africa's golden age. In the south, Great Zimbabwe, a gleaming city of stone, legendary site of King Solomon's mines. In the highlands of Ethiopia, an ancient Christian empire claiming to descend from the Queen of Sheba. And on the east coast, Kilwa, one of Africa's busiest ports. Ibn Battuta will return to Morocco and write the oldest surviving account of Timbuktu and the wealth of Africa. Tuareg will carry their gold back across the Sahara. Its destination across the Mediterranean to Europe. African gold will be key to the greatest explosion of ideas the Western world has ever known. It'll make some men rich and others reckless. Thank you.